Hello everyone and welcome back. This is part two of this wizard's workroom from the brand new book by Johanna Basford, Rooms of Wonder. So I'm going to continue today using the same tools that I used last time. So I'm going to be using my Faber-Castell Albrecht Dura and my Polychromos pencils. I printed this onto my Daily Rowney paper. It is a nice thick but smooth paper and it's absolutely beautiful for mixed media. So uh, let's get started. So today I'm going to get started on these little leaves and things that are around the frame. So I'm going in with my Albrecht Dura pencils first. I'm going to go in with these red tones and for these smaller leaves and for those big leaves in the corner there I'm going to use um, I'm thinking some violet and blue tones so you can w go ahead and do this on both sides of the paper at the same time now I was hoping to be able to do this whole page in two sessions with you guys however I found that there were so many little fiddly bits and pieces so just the fact that you know putting down your pencils and p picking up a new one and so on it actually took a long time even though it wasn't that much to color so <laughs> that's why i've decided to do this into three sessions and that way we can get a little bit more time and we can take it a little bit more easy <laughs> Now I've only just seen as well today, obviously that will be three days ago for you guys watching this, that Johanna Basswood posted something about a colouring competition coming up. So I'm wondering if that might have something to do with these free pages that she's putting up. So make sure you head into um, her website to find these free downloads. If I remember right, I think I found this one if you actually click on her book. So the rooms of wonder and I think they were underneath that. So I keep scrolling down and I think the free downloads were down the bottom. I know there was a few of you guys that had some issues finding it. And I'm just trying to think where it was I found it. I think that's where it was. So go and have a look and click on Rooms of Wonder and see if that's where you can find the downloads. And there are a few more coming as well. So now that this is all wet, I'm going to wait for this to dry, but I'm going to jump over onto the opposite side. I've done exactly the same thing, but I did that before I did that right hand side. So this is all nice and dry and I'm going to keep going with this one. So I'm going to add in some little sort of blue tones for the shadow and that will sort of bring it in line with the background and all the blue and purpley tones that we have in the rest of the picture while still having that sort of red undertone. 
Now I did forget to say at the very start as well that in addition to the Albrecht Dura and the Polychromos pencils I'm also using a Derwent Drawing Chinese White for some blending. I'm also using a Posca pen today as well as my Sakura Jelly Roll. I'll be using my Ivory Posca pen. It's a 1M tip so one of the finer tips and I just wanted something that wasn't stark white up and especially up in this corner here but if you don't have the ivory but you have the white one just go ahead and use the white it's not going to make too much of a difference now I'm back using some more dark red but this time it's a polychromos and not the Albrecht Dura so I won't be activating this second layer that I've been that I'm putting on at the moment we've already activated everything and that's the last bit of activation I'm going to do on these red leaves so everything else I'm doing at the moment is all with polychromos on on these leaves <laughs> Thank you. 
So for these sleeves here, I kind of want all the colours to smush in together and I didn't record that at the end. Once I finished putting all the colours on, um, you will notice a bit later that they're all smushed together and that was because I ended up using the Derwent drawing on top of them all. So you can go ahead and do that afterwards and then put in a little layer of extra blue or something on top. I will let you know at the very end. Just because I think I forgot to say it before, just make sure that you do all of these steps on 
both sides of the paper as well as down the bottom because you have all the same leaves all the way around um, in this framework and just like I did in part one I will just show you sort of this one corner at the time because they're all identical Now if you are enjoying these videos I would love it if you take the time to give it a thumbs up as it really helps the channel and it helps push the video out to a wider audience and if you've got a time to put a little comment down the bottom I'd love that too I'd love to see who's here and be able to thank you personally for watching and if you're new here I would love to have you subscribe make sure to click the notification bell to get notified whenever I post new content. So just after I finished this Posca details is where my camera cut out and it didn't show me do the Derwent drawing but let's have a look just about now. So you can see there that on those um, purpley violet leaves that they are much more smushed together than what they were just in the previous shot. 
So you just go ahead and use that Derwent drawing or if you're using a Posca white pen, uh, pencil you can use that as well and just go ahead and smush them all together and I then added a tiny little bit of that blue I think it was an extra layer of I think it was ultramarine light ultramarine or something I put on top um, just sort of on the underside of the bend so like towards the window if that makes sense I just added a little bit more blue there All right, so I'm gonna do these little bottles and things on the shelf. So I'm gonna go back now to my Albrecht Dura pencils and I'm gonna do introduce some little green, green tones. I'm gonna to do some greens and yellows and blues with these bottles. So I kind of want to make it look like they almost got like an internal glow to them. At least these ones, these bigger glass ones. So I'm hoping that it turns out the way I'm envisioning it, but we'll see. enough pigment down now so I'm going to start blending this together with my water brush and I'm hoping this is turning out the way I wanted to do 
I will obviously be adding more polychromos pencils over the top of these ones just like I did before but you're kind of getting the yeah I think it's gonna start starting to kind of get the feel of this I'm having like the dark areas down towards the bottom where the we're standing on the shelf and then these sort of light areas up towards the top little jars on the left hand side here I kind of want to make them sort of not as see-through as the other ones so I'm going to go in with some darker colors here and just sort of make it kind of look like they're standing a little bit in the shadow of the other ones
Now one of the reasons I'm liking the watercolour pencils is because I can add that extra water just like I'm doing at the moment and remove a little bit of pigment wherever I feel like it needs to be lighter. So I find for example if I'm going to compare it to something like Ink Tense, which is obviously it's ink but it's permanent, you have a much shorter window of doing that while with the watercolour pencils you can reactivate and remove a little bit more if you feel like you need to.
because these jars and bottles are fairly large I'm going to go ahead and remove some of the outlines I can still not find my Sakura 05 so I am trying to go as gentle as I can because this one is a little bit thicker than what I prefer so this is the 08 so it's a little bit bigger nib which means that I'm getting a lot more sort of paint or sort of gel ink whatever whatever you're going to call it down onto the paper which is fine for some things but with other things like removing outlines you want it to be relatively fine and not a thick white line I've just gone ahead and gotten my 10, uh, my 10, just for these little crosses and just to try and get a little bit of shine. I just want it to look like it sort of sparkles and shines a little bit in the glass there. So I just went ahead and got the slightly bigger one and just to make sure I get this down onto the paper because the other one was being a little bit temperamental. Now, I've had a long hard think about what to do with this door and I was tossing up whether to do it like a brightly colored one or a wooden one and I decided to go with a wooden color but I'm still not sure if I'm doing the right thing. We will find out, who knows, maybe I end up hating it but hopefully just having that little bit of wood texture it's so it's not sort of taking away from the rest like the colored room the walls and everything by being a little bit more neutral so we'll see maybe maybe it works hopefully it does Thank you. 
Now while that door is drying, I'm just going to go ahead and finish off this little thing of the top here. I'm just going to just add like a little bit of a shadow. I'm not going to go too crazy on this. I just kind of want it to look like it kind of goes in a little bit and it's just like a funky little decoration on the wall. It's not really anything with any kind of purpose I think. So it's just like a funny little wall decoration. So I'm just adding in that little bit of shadow on the side. I just had to sharpen my pencil a little bit there just so I could get into the uh, little fine corners here and just sort of make it look like it's got a little bit of a depth that goes in here. Alright, the door is now dry, so I can go ahead and add some little details. So I'm going to go in with the Van Dyck Brown and just sort of start going, following those little sort of wood grains and everything that's there and just go along those and see where I feel like putting some dark areas and some shadows. I'll probably also use some burnt umber as well for this one I think.
I'm just going to go over with my Bista just to kind of blend out some of those darker areas a little bit. This one is nearly identical in the shade to, or not in the shade, but in the value kind of thing of the um, raw umber that I put uh, with the watercolor pencil. But I kind of like the, I like this shade a little bit better. But I did have this one in my watercolor pencil, so I had to use my raw umber for that one. But I think it works actually with these sort of two different ones on top of, on top of each other. I actually think they complement each other pretty well here. And we get that slightly lighter area where we have the watercolor pencil and then we sort of blend it out with this sort of mid-tone. this idea about this area behind the door I kind of want to go in with some yellow tones and literally just have light sort of shining out of it and I'm wondering if I might sort of when I'm finished with the whole picture I might add some details either with a white Posca pen or maybe even some acrylic paint to have some sort of light rays sort of come out of that door 
so I'll see what I end up with doing I just know that I don't want to put too much like color or anything in there I just want it to be like this really brightly lit room that's kind of shining through so I'm hoping that it will work it's I'm not sure I'm not quite not sure if yeah if this will work or not but we'll find out soon enough
I'll come back to these ones here a little bit later once they are all dry so I'll go ahead and just keep going with some other things and then I'll add some more colors to this afterwards
I'm a little bit unsure about the floor. I've decided to go in with like a light violet and I'm going to add some warm grey too of the top of it. I would usually have used a cold grey but with my small set of Albrecht Dura I only have the warm greys so if you happen to have the cool ones I would use a cool grey too instead just because of the coolness of the violet. So I'm just going over it very very lightly with the violet and then I'll put that grey over the top of it. I'm going all the way to the right hand side and you obviously you won't see it because I'll just show you this one. It's literally the same all the way to the right hand side wherever you can see the bare floor. So I'm just going to go in with that grey now over the top. Again I'm not going to press too hard. I just wanted to sort of like I don't know <laughs> mute down that violet a little bit so it's not so bright. Now and I might end up going in and changing this maybe in part three or something. I'm still really undecided about what I want to do with this but I might just go in later on and maybe add some more shadows maybe some blue tones or something like that around. I don't know what do you think have you got any suggestions please add it in the comments below and who knows maybe I'll maybe I'll go with one of you um, if you've got any cool suggestions maybe I'll go with one of them With this sort of central table here I'm going to do like I did with the frame and I'm going to go in with my black first and then some helio blue reddish now I did end up going in you know in the little the little wall areas behind in the shelves so sort of behind all of the books and the bottles I ended up using a black Posca pen for that so don't worry too much about getting in behind there where I'm coloring right now if you don't want to um, you could just add a black layer and activa activate it just to have a little bit of a under layer underneath the Posca but don't worry too much that it's not if it's not neat or anything I just found that I needed it even darker than what I could get it with the pencils so that's why I ended up doing the Posca layer in the back here.
for these little bottles on the bottom shelf I'm gonna full on cheat I'm gonna do the same colors on all of them um, at least with my Albrecht Dura first and then I'm gonna go in and sort of very slightly individualize a few of them but this is just to try to speed up the process a little bit just because this is tiny little things and to try and do separate things for each of them it's gonna take me absolutely forever so to try and keep my sanity this is what I'll be doing So as you can see I'm just going to add in that little bit of dark blue now and we've pretty much got a few different slightly different colored bottles 
and we still had that sort of same base base layer for all of them and it just made up my job so much easier doing that rather than doing them each individually it would have taken far more time and I'm, as you can see I'm doing the same thing now with the books up the top so I've already put down my layers my base layer there and now I'm just gonna sort of individualize a couple of them a little bit more I'm still working on darkening up this little table I'm still finding it looking really patchy still now as I mentioned before in the area I'm currently coloring I did end up using a black Posca pen just to go over it just because I found I couldn't get the black black enough and I needed something really really opaque so that got rid of that sort of patchiness that I'm trying to remove at the moment and I wouldn't have had to do all of this work on here beforehand so just leave it and just wait for the Posca and <laughs> just do the Posca pen or whatever other black pen that you have. So 
So I'm just going to do a layer of my Derwent Chinese white just to sort of blend out. As you can see, it's smushing together things so much better on those shelves at the moment. It is removing all that patchiness, but obviously I can't put that on the black because it's just going to lighten it too much. So that's what I ended up doing up the top here and I'll just add a little bit more blue tones to it and then it should be all good.
So now that I got the tabletop the way I want it to be, I'm going to go in with this black Posca pen that I've mentioned a few times and I'll show you that transformation. You'll get that really good sort of difference between those light bottles and that really dark opaque background and I feel like it makes those bottles pop so much more.
so I don't have much to go now I'm just wanting to finish off anything that's sort of standing on the table so I'm just gonna go ahead and do the stand for that big I don't know what it is is it a globe is it a crazy planet what is it what do you guys think pop it in the comments so I'm gonna finish that one off and I'll finish off those two bottles that are down on the rug um, and then I think we are all done for today this has taken a whole lot longer than I thought I've edited out about something along the line of an hour of like dead time where I'm picking up and putting down pencils so this took a whole lot longer than what I thought when I just looked at the amount of things to do but it means that we're just gonna have to get going on a part three go we are all done with part two there you have it the sort of final not the final but the final reveal for now so it is nice and bright I'm happy with how this turned out especially after all the issues I had with that little table down the bottom so I had a couple of uh, little close-ups of a few things and I am looking forward to starting working on the rest of it and I can't wait to show you when we got it all finished so in the meantime I wish you all a colorful day and I will see you again next time